On October 12, 2023, a 39-year-old mother who had just given birth to a newborn baby girl just 14 days prior was brutally murdered in her bed with her 14-day-old baby next to her in her crib. <gasps> Hi everyone, welcome back to Crime and Wine. As always, my name is Ariana, but you guys can call me Ari, and if by the end of today's video you've enjoyed today's case, it would mean so much to me if you like, subscribe, and comment below. So, grab your wine, and let's get into today's case. And right now, a new video capturing the moment a 13-year-old confesses to stabbing his mother to death as his newborn baby sister lies inches away from it all. As if hearing that a mother was killed just inches away from her 14-day-old baby girl, the part of this case that makes it that much more worse is that the person who killed her was her own 13-year-old son who stabbed his mother to death. Irina Garcia was a 39-year-old mother to her son Derek Rosa and her newborn baby girl. At the time of her very unfortunate murder, she had been married to her husband who was the father of her newborn baby girl but was the stepfather to Derek Rosa. On October 12, 2023 at 11.31 p.m., Derek called 911 asking the dispatcher to send the police to his apartment but he said he did not know his own address. The family lived at the Amelia Oaks apartment complex on West 79th Place in Florida. He would go on to let them know that his mother was dead upon the police dispatcher asking him if his mom was breathing. The dispatcher goes on to ask why Derek killed his mother and he just said that there was blood all over the floor. Derek even tells the dispatcher that he took pictures of his mother's bloody dead body and told his friends about it and asked the dispatcher if that was bad. The dispatcher tried to clarify and ask who he told about that and he just said it was one of his friends and it turns out specifically it was an online friend where he said I don't know his real name because he's an online friend who I play with a lot. He continued on and said I didn't delete the pictures off my phone, but I sent them to him, and I told him that I was sorry and goodbye, goodbye to him. He told the dispatcher, quote, I'm really, really sad. I'm okay, but my mom is not okay. She's dead. I need to know if your mom is, is breathing. She's dead, miss. Okay, and what did you do then? Blood all over the floor. I need to know, do you think we can help your mom? Miss, she's dead. Miss. Yes. I took pictures and I told my friends about it. Was that bad? You told who about it? My friends. Who did you send those pictures to? My friends. I don't know his real name because he is an online friend who I play with a lot. Upon the police arriving at the apartment, Derek even asked the dispatcher if the police were going to kill him, which the dispatcher assured him no, they were not going to. Derek Rosa was an extremely intelligent and very well-behaved kid, which with his personality of such, what he did to his mother shocked every single person around him. He was an honor roll student in eighth grade at I Mater Charter Middle School in Florida, and he had maintained a straight A honor roll status. And guys, maybe this is just me that thinks it's weird, but if he was this intelligent of a kid, in a way, I'm kind of surprised that when he first called the police dispatcher, he told her that he did not know his own address. But I guess on the other end, it could have just been the stress of the moment and all of that, but I don't know. Anyways, friends, family, and neighbors described him as a seemingly well-adjusted teen who was often seen helping his mother, and he appeared calm. At the time of the incident, his stepfather, who was a truck driver, was away in Georgia, but he was on his way home, while the mother, her newborn daughter, and Derek were the only ones present in the apartment. Neighbors and friends were left baffled by the gruesome act, with some recalling how Derek and his stepfather participated in a joyful maternity photo shoot with Irina Garcia before the birth of her daughter. The contrast between these idyllic photos and the tragic outcome was striking. Even in his call to 911 with the dispatcher, he was described as a very polite and apologetic young man during his interactions with the emergency dispatcher and responding officers. Another interesting part of the 911 call was that at some point, Derek said he found two guns 
and was, quote, going to shoot myself, but I didn't want to. And he also asked what he should do if his mom was to wake up. And the dispatcher said, quote, if she wakes up, just let me know. I need to know. Do you think that we can help your mom? And he just said, miss, she's dead. Also, this is really strange, but during the 911 call, Derek is heard saying, quote, someone is calling my mom. He later says, my stepdad is calling me, do I answer? In which the dispatcher told him to ignore the calls and remain in the living room. And he also tells the operator he didn't want to, quote, touch his week of weeks old sister. And maybe I'm like a super suspicious person or some kind of conspiracy theorist of sort, but I found it strange that his stepdad would call him because his dad is a truck driver, which I assume he drives a lot during the night, possibly, and they've all been used to his job and what that type of schedule. And also keep in mind that the killing happened close to midnight, so I'm not sure why his stepfather would feel the absolute need to call Derek just because Arena didn't answer her phone. If it was him calling her when Derek told the dispatcher someone was calling his mom, but. I can make an inference that it was him since Derek told dispatcher his stepdad was calling him. But that's just a side note of an internal thought of mine, but let me know what you guys think about that. Maybe it was just their routine that he would call both of them, or one of them every night? Possibly. The police lieutenant, Eddie Rodriguez, said Rosa allegedly waited for his mother to fall asleep, then stabbed her multiple times in the neck. The affidavit stated that the victim, Arena, was found dead on the bedroom floor next to a crib where her 14-day-old daughter was sleeping, but luckily the newborn was unharmed. Police reports state a motive has not yet been found. On Tuesday, November 28, 2023, the 13-year-old Derek Rosa appeared at his first in-person court appearance wearing his brown prison grab and appeared to mostly nod his head while speaking to his legal team. He sat emotionless during his first in-person court appearance as his father watched from the gallery and reportedly blew a kiss to the accused killer. Footage of the hearing showed the teen's eyes dart across the courtroom during the proceeding. And while Derek was reportedly calm in the, the Miami-Dade courtroom, some of his family members and attendants were very, very emotional. I went to the kitchen. I grabbed one of the kitchen knives and then I went to her room and then I ate. It's okay, you guys are going to Jose Rosa, who is Derek's father, which I couldn't find much information on him at this time, had supported Derek and pleaded on behalf of Derek for leniency and understanding from the judges. He says, quote, I guess what we're asking for is another opportunity, a second chance to help him grow and become mature as a grown man to put this behind him. The father said, and this is currently still a developing case, but another interesting thing about this case is that Derek's defense team successfully argued for permission from the judge to inspect the crime scene during the hearing. It's a bit strange, only because the murder happened on October 12th, and at the time of the inspection of the apartment, that would take place about a month or more later. So, Frank Ramos, which is Rosa's stepfather, who was living with the defendant at the time of the murder and who lost Arena, his wife, is objecting to the inspection. Ramos said that he is turning in the apartments at the end of the month, which would have been in November, and that family members, including Rosa's biological father, have already gone in. Ramos added that family members have taken the victims and the defendant's personal items from the apartment. And Hirsch questioned why defense attorneys were asking to go into an apartment more than a month after the murder, especially since many people had already gone inside. Hirsch said Ramos has the privacy right to decide who enters his apartment and wonders if even has authority to approve this emergency request. State attorneys argued police had already legally inspected and recorded the apartment as protocol. And guys, we're not exactly sure what the defense attorneys are looking for inside the apartment, but I guess some hints would be from what Derek's attorney said, which was, quote, there are measurements of the closets of how far that is from the bedroom, where the weapons were located, and etc. 
said Armando Lewis, one of Rose's attorneys, and he would say it would assist us in getting into the defense's theory and state of mind at the time. Whatever information is gathered from inside the apartment will be kept private since it, quote, is necessary to defend against the allegations. As of December 7th, there was another court date where the defense attorney said they want to present witnesses to prove Derek's rights are being violated inside Metro West and that he should be moved back to the juvenile detention. Rosa, Derek Rosa, is the youngest of 34 juveniles being held at the new juvenile section at Metro West and the rest are all around 16 and 17 years old. The Department of Corrections said that they are always watching Derek because he's considered high profile. The teen is kept alone in a cell with a frosted window with no direct view of outside. Derek is alone and cannot associate with other children and he is only allowed to quote play with staff members to ensure his safety. safety. Prosecutors are against moving him to juvenile detention because they say Rosa needs to be treated as an adult. Prosecutors assert that following a comprehensive examination of all pertinent evidence, grand jurors in Miami have indicted Rosa, subsequently transferring his case to the jurisdiction of the adult felony court. His father, as reported by ABC Miami affiliate WPLG after a recent court hearing, is advocating for his release. He says, quote, it is regrettable that this tragic incident unfolded. Nonetheless, this child is remarkably unassuming and differential. None could have envisioned such an occurrence. He goes on to say he remains a child within the household and within the family. He is not perceived as an adult. In correspondence with Law and Crime, his legal representative, Kristen Jackman, asserted that her client enjoys unwavering support from his entire family. She says, quote, it is crucial to bear in mind that merely two months prior, Derek was a 12-year-old child, she emphasized. We maintain complete faith in the criminal justice system and the due process of law. And guys, a really sad element about this case is that the hours before and during the killing, there was a camera in the room, possibly a baby monitor, which recorded the entire thing. This was submitted into evidence where a surveillance footage screenshot shows Arena Garcia holding what appears to be her infant daughter. Authorities said her son, Derek Rosa, stabbed her to death near the baby. The majority of photos that prosecutors released concerned the murder weapon, a kitchen knife missing the tip, and covered in blood and hair. One of the pictures released by prosecutors shows Rosa as he makes a shock sign with a hand covered in red blood. Authorities said that he had sent this image to his friends. Well guys, as I was saying earlier, this is a developing case, so I do plan to come back to this case later on when we hear more details. The trial has not even started. We have the preliminary court dates that have been going on. Um, majority of those conversations in the court have been about whether he should be in the juvenile and try it as a child or try it as an adult and may remain um, or be moved to a, an adult prison. Um, so once that is assumed and clarified and we know what's going to happen there, then we're going to get into the trial and I'm hoping that, I mean, there's no answer that could possibly justify this horrible, horrible thing. This poor baby girl is now going to grow up without ever knowing her mother. Um, it's, it's really sad. It's really unfortunate. Um, I would hope that we get some kind of answer from this child himself. He's only 13, but to do such a horrible thing, it's unimaginable, unbelievable, but definitely let me know your thoughts on this case down below. If there's any cases that you'd like me to take a look at and dive into and do my research on and cover in one of my next videos, then comment that below. Definitely let me know. Follow me on socials, and as always, Thank you guys so much for joining me for another episode of Crime and Wine. And if you liked today's episode and want to stay tuned for the update, then please like and subscribe. And thank you guys so much for everything. So I'll see you guys back here for another episode of Crime and Wine.